we are live. So, Hawkeye episode 6. So this is Christmas. Thoughts? And, as usual, spoilers for the MCU leading up to this point, including this episode. Also some comic books, and I might discuss theories that might spoil upcoming MCU stuff in this video. Now, whether you celebrate Christmas, Hanukkah, Ramadan, Kwanzaa, anything else religious, or anything non-religious, I wish you and the people you care about happy holidays. As usual, I recommend readers talking about Easter eggs and such on the show, reacting to it, reviewing episodes, especially videos made by new rockstar, screen rant, nerdist, CBR, screen crush, black nerd, comedy, IGN, heavy spoilers, magic Mackey, emergency awesome, real James, Jesse Gender, Nando V movies, and Sean Chandler talks about. Not saying all of them did one or more videos on this specific episode, or even show, just that they're good for Disney Plus shows that tie into the MCU. So, if this is the first of these videos by me that you watch, just to get you up to speed, I love every MCU movie. No matter how hard I look for flaws, I can't rate any lower than 7 out of 10. And a number of them are perfect 10 out of 10. Although I don't make any excuses for Iron Man 2, and I love every episode that's come out so far of the Disney Plus MCU shows. Perfect 10 out of 10 for WandaVision, Captain America's Winter Soldier, Season 1 of Loki, Season 1 of What If, and yeah, this entire show as well now that in even the finale has aired. Now, let's see. I've read all issues of Matt Fraction and David Aha's Hawkeye. Love it. And let's see. Yeah, again, there is some, some issues with pacing in this episode. Now, let's see. No broad acting performances. Parts of the episode are dark. The acting is quite good in the episode, and there are some great character moments for, yeah, I was going to say most, but really all of the characters. And everyone behaves in character. Now, Nando V Movies have pointed out that, has pointed out that, you know, grief appears to be the main theme for Phase 4 of the MCU, and... That is definitely on display in this episode. And I think they do a good exploration of grief. You know, Yelena and Clint both grieve Natasha. And they... Like, they knew her for different periods of her life, basically. So it's... You know, they... they yeah, they, they have some common ground and can kind of, you know, it's it's different than if, let's say that it was Clint and Steve, for example, who knew Natasha for a number of the same years. So, so yeah. And... Let's see, and, and yeah, ultimately this is another episode of an MCU Disney Plus show where the handling of the villain character, like, could be better. I thought that, you know, Kingpin was very entertaining in this, but ultimately, I mean, because he's in so little of this, and it's been years since we last saw him, since anyone last saw him, I haven't watched the Netflix shows yet. If, if they really are going to... I, I might have to, you know, if... if Stuff is going to be considered canon, and yeah, but yeah, it's been years since he last appeared, and I've heard some say that this is basically a new character, like he's 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 much closer to the comic here than he was in the Netflix show, and he's not that similar to the Netflix character, it's just, it's the same actor, and you know, some elements of, you know, you've got the cufflinks, and, and like, the, the rage issues and such but like his what he's wearing this entire episode is right out of one of the comics and yeah like it's ultimately like he's essentially more fan servicey than because even if you okay you know i get it this is the guy who's been behind the whole thing this entire show you know every time we see the tracksuit mafia do something they're doing it because he ordered them to you know and he is the one to, you know he's 
Yeah, he, he was the one who gave the order for Kazi to let Clint know that Ronan could kill, you know. I feel like I heard that in the comic, Kingpin just shoots him himself. I don't know why he felt the need to, like, outsource and outsource. Like, at least with Attack of the Clones, they had toys to sell. I don't know why this assassination is being outsourced like this. But anyway, yeah, he's behind the whole thing. So, you know, once he's been stopped, Clint and Kate no longer have to worry about the whole you know, yeah, about all this stuff going on, and we, we as a viewer, will know that the, the Tracksuit Mafia are done, and, you know, there's, there's resolution for Maya, who, for this entire show, has been wanting to kill Ronan, you know, all, all this stuff, but at the end of the day, like, he really didn't get that much characterization, like, he's been, he's been the boogeyman that they keep talking about, like, be careful, you know, you know, he's not going to be happy when he finds out that Maya isn't going low profile and Clint is like worried that the big guy is going to find out, you know, but he's not that much of a character and and at the end of the day he's the main villain. He's the main villain of this show. Yeah, I I hope they get better, you know. Again, I love these shows. I think they do a lot of things extremely well, but they do have a bit of a villain issue. Now, I want to say it was Nando V Movies who said that this episode, you know, he, he predicted this, this episode would be like the WandaVision finale. A lot of action scenes and a couple of fights where some characters have conversations that clears some of this stuff up, but not careful resolution of all the stuff set up by episode, episodes leading up to it. And that is true, although ultimately, you know, WandaVision had more, like, there were so many hints of, of big stuff, you know, main, important characters from the, from the Marvel comics that might now be getting into the MCU. And then by the end of the finale, it's just, nope, the, I still love that show, but I get people who are really disappointed by, anyway. And, yeah, like some of the other MCU shows, a very action-packed finale. Now, the people making the show know exactly what we want, and that's Kingpin. We've been waiting a week for Kingpin. We want Kingpin, so they open the episode right after the previously on with Kingpin. I handled Armand. Jack is taking the fall. Theories confirmed. That was quick. I don't need a minute. And Eleanor does the dramatic walk away. The, those always look extremely satisfying to pull off. And Kate sees the video of what we just saw, which I, I really appreciate. I, I hope... I mean, I think... I guess the idea is supposed to be either Kingpin has, like, an active security camera that even picks up audio in his office running when he's in there, which, like... I don't know, I guess he took a hint from Nixon? Or... Yelena... snuck into a good position and, and like, held up her smartphone to... I'm not... I don't completely understand the logistics of it, but I'm glad it happened, because we don't have to have all this... You know, we're, we're like... Like, let's say she, you know, if they only had the picture, maybe Kate would be like, well, this doesn't prove anything, maybe she's... You know, whatever, but here... She sees it, she hears those things, you know, clearly, you know, yeah. And Kate is, we see Kate very upset, very understandably. I appreciate that we see that she's a human being, she has a very natural reaction. This is one of the things we love about the MCU. The heroes are not flawless, they're not shrugging off just anything. Kate, you're my partner, and clearly that means the world to her, to hear him say that. And she explains to him about the invasion where she saw him be the hero. He finally accepts he can be a role model. And this is after she's aware that he was Ronan, after she heard Yelena accuse him. So, you know, she accepts him, warts and all, and still idolizes. I guess, I would say by now she's come to a more healthy relationship where, like, she's not, she doesn't think that he's some kind of flawless, you know, but she does still... Yeah, she, she still thinks, hmm, how, how do I phrase that? She thinks the world of him, but not, 
in a kind of way where she thinks that he's never made a single mistake kind of thing. Now, so you see the kingpin knows at least some sign language, uses it to communicate with Maya, but at least some of the time Kazi interprets both ways. And I, I quite like, you know, I, I forget which of my fellow YouTubers pointed out, but it's a couple of very specific things that Kingpin knows how to communicate with sign language. He he knows how to say low profile, and he knows how to say I love you. So that's, yeah, you know, two things that are important for him to be able to, to tell her. And yeah, you know, he, he, you know, he signs, I love you. And the supremely sick thing is he might actually mean that like with Thanos. And the moment Maya is gone, Kingpin breaks down in front of Kazi and does realize Maya has turned on them. I think it would be kind of funny if it was like, no, no, she literally, she just needed a couple of days off. And... We need a ton of gear, like a whole batch of way too dangerous arrows. And she's so happy to hear him say that. And we get a montage that other YouTubers have compared to, like, Home Alone. Yeah, I can see that. And they're making trick arrows, including pepper spray, pim, way too dangerous, magnet, stark. And I, I really appreciate, we, we actually get to see a number of them in use, like, you know, they, they don't, like, call them out right before they use them, but, you know, yeah, the, the for example, the magnet one, yeah, that, <laughs> and, and the, what was it, I, f I forget, C cool down, was it maybe called, or so something, I'm not gonna lie, when I saw that guy's legs start to freeze, I was like, are they gonna go hard R with this, because I've never seen... I don't, I don't think I've ever seen a movie where something, where someone's body part froze like that and it didn't go hard R with it, but they didn't, so yeah, first, first time for everything. And Clint impresses upon Kate how difficult it is to be a hero, and she tells him, yeah, so I'm doing an invasion, how it inspired her, I might have put that out of order. Yeah, anyway. And Clint asks Kate what the threats are, what the assets are, and, you know, like, I mean, he is basically treating her like a partner now. And the LARPers are undercover all over the party. Assets getting to be part of the action like we hoped, and Grills does not die, thankfully. Yelena Belova does not want her coat checked. And, you know, later we see, I my guess was that it was like, full of and or concealing weapons that she intends to use, but ultimately it was like a tactical suit that she was wearing under there. And Kate gets... Yeah, yeah, Kate gets Elnor literally out of Cassie's crosshairs, and I really appreciate Kate. Kate just shows Elnor the video instead of implying, saying, I know, over and over without Elnor understanding or believing. We've seen that way too many times in various movies and shows. And then Kazi takes a shot at Clint. And Yelena realizes a sniper is firing at the building. And she looks at most mildly perturbed by it. Like, it, I'm pretty sure that's like the face of... Like, like... If, if like, yeah, if, if like someone cuts you off in traffic or... Like, the, the light is taking really long to, to, to change. It's not even like you're, like, late or that you have something, you have somewhere to be. It's just, it's mildly annoying. Like, a sniper again? Really? Okay, Jack, this is it. It's your time. And Swordsmaster got out his sword. I, I quite like the, you know, I, I think it was, yeah, Kate, Kate is like, he just got out of, he, he was just bailed out of prison for apparently killing a guy with a sword. And now he's got a, a sword. And Clint actually says, let's see, I don't think he said weird flex. I think he said strange flex or something like that. You know, 
weird flex, but okay. I did not think I was going to hear Clint Barton say that, but I'm glad I did. And Kate spots Yelena, tries to intercept. She can't keep her out of I, I really like, you know, she goes up there and, so how are you planning on finding Clint? He's in this elevator. Of, well, how, how can you possibly know what floor he's going to get? Twelve. And, you know, Kate can't keep Yelena out of the elevator, but she does manage to get in there herself and... At, you know, she tries, I want to say, like, three or four times to go for the floor buttons. with and, and Yelena keeps stopping her. And after several of them, she, like, slaps her in the face. And it just shocks both of them. Yelena's like, what was that? And Kate's like, I don't know. <laughs> oh, these characters, oh, so precious. Just absolutely. And, you know, and, and they, they struggle a little, and the, the like, overcoat, uh, yeah, Kate's, no, wait, I guess it's like a tuxedo, you know, it comes off, and she's standing there in the in the suit, and he's like, oh, that's a nice, nice suit, and, did you plan that? Yes. No, no, I didn't. And she does manage to press a bunch of the buttons. Ah, oh, that's so annoying. <laughs> Again, like. They're acting like, like, the, not not like people who are trying, like, Yelena literally wants to kill Kate's mentor and friend. And Kate is trying to save a life. And they're acting like it's it's just, <laughs> yeah, m you know, mi mildly annoying. That, but yeah, so Yelena gets off at the very first floor it stops at, runs for the stairs with Kate in hot pursuit. And next time we see them, Kate is trying to stop Yelena. And yeah, and and then and and Kate is like, "Look, it's Christmas. Why don't we go have a drink together?" Oh, sure. After I kill Clint Barton. N no, that's not what I meant. And the two of them stop to talk and compliment each other's moves. Stop making me like you! <laughs> and Yelena does the, the repelling rope thing. See, at this point, it is my... Okay, I know, for in this one, she actually does use it for a purpose. But it is, at this point, my headcanon that she does not leave a building without using repelling rope. It's just... Because that's never going to stop being cool. You know, so so it's just yeah. She's she's got the repelling rope, and she like ah uh, what's what's it glides I guess down past Clint, and she's got the gun, and and she does manage to to fire, but she misses. And then Kate slides down the repelling rope and just barely makes the landing without getting badly hurt. Like that was that was really tense. And Kate, expertly using martial arts, disposes of several tracksuit mafia. And I, you know, and she can't, one of them's the, the, ah, uh, yeah, I, I don't remember his name, so I'm just, but, you know, he's like, I know it's not the best moment right now, but I want to thank you for telling me how to speak to my girlfriend. It worked? Yes, we went to Maroon 5 instead. <laughs> I love that this whole conversation, like, you know, he's got he's got a gun in his hand, so she's got like his hand in a grip. And they're they're having this nice conversation, and she's still got his hand in that grip. It just you know, he's not like putting the gun away either. And just yeah. Or or like surrendering, you know, okay, yeah, he can't put the gun away once she has his hand in the grip, but he could be like, No, no, I'm I'm sorry, I'm I'm surrendering, you know. But no, he doesn't do that either. And Clint and Kazi fight. Clint detonates some explosives, knocking out some tracks of mafia. I appreciate we we see several dozen of them in this one episode. Like basically every single one of them was called into action for this. And Clint tries to do you know, he tries to like zip line using the bow, but ends up stuck in the in the big tree, which I don't remember the Ro Rockefeller Plaza tree, maybe Rockefeller Plaza Christmas tree. 
and you know, yeah, ends up stuck in it, but at least he has an owl for company, and apparently, according to some of my fellow YouTubers, there was an owl in that tree, like, a few years ago, so maybe that's why, it's, you know, and it sets up that later it can g g carry off the, the tiny little uh, trust a bro van, which has been pin particle to, to being tiny. And, you know, when the owl carries it off, you hear, like, tiny little voices. And the, the subtitles, like, identified as children screaming. And, you know, yeah, I mean, the I, I guess the, they're getting fed to the owl's children? That's dark. And the LARPer shall evacuate people, take out some tracks with Mafia. And Kate, <laughs> I really like, you know, Kate is like, Clint, where are you? I'm in the tree. You're in the tree. I'm going to get you out of there. Kate, what are you going to do? Kate, repeat after me. I am not going to do something incredibly stupid. <laughs> and she's got, she, like, she uses an acid arrow to melt part of it. And just, yeah. I didn't know I needed to see Kate knocking down the, the Christmas tree. But I'm really happy that it's something I got. And... You know, and, and the two of them end up in the worst spot to be, according to Rhodey and Iron Man 2. They're completely surrounded, they're on the ice, but it's, you know, it's Christmas, so of course, it, it's Christmas in New York. What could be more Christmas in New York than the ice at Rockefeller Plaza? Now, and, yeah, I really love them using a bunch of trick arrows. And Kate is so happy that, she, that Clint wore the suit. It, it does look good in it. You know, they found a way to... People have been complaining for a decade now that he doesn't look anything... That the, You know, what he wears looks nothing like what he wears in the comics. And, yeah, they managed to find a way to, to put him in something that much more closely resembles what he wears in the comics. And, yeah, I mean, they've been, they've been pretty good at doing this. Like, let's see. WandaVision did it... With, with Wanda, not with, not with Queen Snowblue. And Captain America and the... I, I guess Captain America and the Winter Soldier didn't especially make fun of the, the suit that... I can't believe I'm blanking on his name. Sam. That Sam ends up wearing. And let's see... I'm not sure I can off the top of my head think of. There's probably some in What If. Loki had Old Man Loki. Which, yeah, if you haven't read the comics, that's literally, that's exactly what he used to look like. The the the, the colors and the, the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I guess every single one of them has given us at least one character that looks extremely close to what... A lot closer to what they look like in the comic than the the used to and it's it's frequently the titular character so that's cool and clint gave kate a sonic arrow and a way too dangerous arrow and yeah some really great stuff with the two hall guys using trick arrows kate now does perfectly pull off that takedown maneuver where she wraps her thighs around the neck of the tracks with the mafia and yeah, Kate uses the Pim Arrow on the Trust of Bro van. And, you know, they're, they're like, well, what's going to happen to the... Oh, there, the owl takes them off. Okay. Let's see. And Yelena tackles Clint. Maya knocks down some tracks with Mafia. Kazi initiates a fight with her. It's nice to finally meet you, Elena. Yelena. I need to know what happened. And your sister sacrificed herself and she saved the world. Thank you for openly communicating. Of course, Yelena is not going to believe it right away, but at least try. And yeah, I mean, the details probably are too ridiculous for her to accept. But, you know, really, she was giving him a chance to be honorable about it, come clean about his awful deed so she could execute him afterwards. So he, he dies having confessed. You know, that's, it's, it's not, she's not really ready to believe that he did, that, that it wasn't murder. And Kingpin confronts Eleanor. 
and Kate comes to save her, but is having trouble taking down Kingpin with arrows, whether normal or trick, and Eleanor ran the car into Kingpin, badass, not quite sure how she managed to get that much speed for, for the thing, because, like, crowded streets, anyway, and Maya tries to convince Kazi they can both leave the life behind, but he refuses, and basically forces her to kill him with the regular arrow, and he dies in her embrace. I'm I'm not gonna lie that when when like, you know the they fire the the arrows and split, so so there's one headed straight for Kazi and two for some other. You know, Kazi manages to catch it, and the other two actually did get hit. You know, so he catches it and he's like, "Nice shot." Yeah, no, it's yeah, you know, it's no duh, and and the. At, at first, I thought it was gonna be like with the when he fired an arrow at Loki, in in Avengers one. But the the no, this time it actually is as embarrassing as you know. Like Loki was like, oh, this is so embarrassing for you. I can't believe you actually thought that you could you know that you could affect a god. But no, here it actually is because this is a much more down to earth story. Holy crap, Kingpin just got up right after the hit and run. I didn't recover that quickly from playing the Simpsons game hit and run. And Clint continues to try to convince Yelena. She continues to not believe him. And Kingpin breaks the arrows, but it's still the, the, the arrow heads themselves are still there. They have a physical fight. You're really starting to annoy me. <laughs> she has that effect on people. And she uses a coin flip, and I want to say it was with one of his cufflinks, and that activates all the arrows. Very, very cool. I really appreciate that Kate, like, has Eleanor arrested. It's it's not like, <laughs> yeah, it's it's not some fairy tale where it's just no, no. She's having having her arrested actually. And, you know, so, someone pointed out that. It, it seemed like some of the stuff was ADR'd and maybe reshot, and I, th I think it might have been, yeah, which, that's, that's too bad. And Eleanor is talking about how someone has to take the consequences, rationalizing her criminal activity. And Yelena is right about to shoot Clint, and he does the whistle that was in the solo movie. So she lowers her guard, starts accepting that he's telling the truth in part because of how much he knows about her and Natasha's past so he accepts that she she accepts that he trust she accepts that Natasha trusted him enough there got there eventually to tell him these like these are not things that she just goes around telling everyone and yeah, they, they share in their grief of her. Holy crap, after all of that, Kingpin can still just walk away. Unfortunately for him, as he's walking away, he walks right into Maya. You and I are family. And there's no shooting family. Right, Audrey? And she shoots him. I really appreciate that she's the one who got to do that. As much as Kate wants to stop him to save her mother... Maya is the one who deserves to, to be able to kill Kingpin, although we don't see it, only the flash from far away. If I know my comic books, and I do, that means that something else might have happened and he'll return later. Like, this is not exactly a franchise that's afraid of showing villains dying on camera. We're basically Avengers. And and the... I Bombshell? Was that what she was called? tries to recruit Jack for LARPing and Clint comes home for Christmas Day and brings Kate and Lucky to meet the family brought home a couple of strays so the watch was Laura Barton's and it's shield issue so she must have been an agent and agent 19 is mocking Jane the comics and it does say 19 I forget if it says agent 19 or just 19 but yeah you know this is not accidental like of, of all the numbers they could have put on there. Yeah. And, you know, in the, in the comics, it's not Laura Barton who's Mockingjay, but Clint Barton does marry Mockingjay, so it does make sense. 
you should take better care of your stuff. You're one to talk. And very cute, the episode and show ends with Kate suggesting a bunch of nicknames. And Clint turns all of them down and then he says, I have an idea. And then it cuts to the title card. So he is saying she's going to be the new Hawkeye. Possibly a missed opportunity not to reference Hawk Guy, which is something that Grills in the comics calls Clint, clearly thinking that that's the actual name. But yeah, there there are some some fun like what was, Hawk Eve, as in like Eve the the because it's a it's the name of a woman I guess and Lady Hawk because she she really wanted to work Hawk into it. And the mid credits scene is a full musical number from Rogers the Musical starting with civilians singing about how the Avengers need to save them, and then the bit that we saw in the pilot episode, the Avengers during the Chitauri invasion only, now we get an uninterrupted performance of it. And someone else here on YouTube said that these are actual, at least some of these are actual Broadway stars. That's very cool. And it must be pretty surreal for them to, like, I I, I get, like, they, they've done other, like, I've heard their, I don't know if it's still running, but there was... And I don't know if it was Broadway, but I've heard there was like an X, or, or at least a Wolverine-centric musical, you know, live, yeah, live performance musical thing. So, and there was the Spider-Man, you know, others have pointed out, Rogers the Musical on this show is basically like a parody of Hamilton and Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark. Nah. Summer disappointed Kingpin was killed off in this. Uh, like this, I honestly don't think he's dead. Like, if if I recall, in, in the comics, he was left blind by being shot by Maya Lopez. And, yeah, I, th I think there's some chance. I mean, I guess we don't know yet if we're getting another, like at least one more season of Daredevil, or if Daredevil's just gonna show up in other stuff. You know, he is part of the MCU now, evidently. And, yeah, like, the, the, what was the, um... Yeah, so, so I don't know if, you know, it could be an interesting parallel. Blind Kingpin facing blind Daredevil, but... Yeah, I, I really, really don't think that they actually would kill him off just like that. Now, we know that Natasha's recruitment uh, into S.H.I.E.L.D. was that Clint was sent to kill her, and he chooses to recruit her instead because he sees some humanity in her. In this episode, Yelena was sent to kill Clint, but she sees some humanity in him, and... You know, we don't know if it's going to be the Avengers or the Dark Avengers or some, you know, but yeah, there's there's some chance that it's going to be. So they have a, a nice mirroring thing there because that is the thing. Like in the comics, Natasha and Yelena, you know, they started out as villains. So because because the comics, you know, the first time Natasha Romanoff appeared in the comics, the Cold War was going on. So. A Russian spy, yeah, she was the bad guy, pretty pretty much. That was, yeah. So the let's see, and and I, I want to say in the comics, if I recall, Yelena was harder to turn good or or something, and and didn't she fight Natasha the first time? I I don't remember for sure. So, yeah, every major conflict and issue the show brought up was basically resolved in this, more or less. I understand if some people feel some of the resolutions were too easy and unsatisfying. Certainly the relationship between Kazi and Maya needed more depth. But, yeah, you know, Clint accepts being a mentor to Kate, and they very effectively fight alongside each other. I already mentioned the interesting place it leaves Yelena Belova. Yeah, it really is. Like, maybe next time we see her, like, maybe she's gonna, like, confront Val. Confront Val and say, you lied to me. You tried to get me to kill an innocent man, you know. Or maybe she, maybe Clint is the only person she's not okay with. Like, 
yeah, maybe she's going to go back to Val, and it is, there is going to be Dark Avengers, and she's going to be the Black Widow there, but maybe she's going to be the first to turn. So, it's just, yeah, some really interesting stuff. And, yeah, in the episode 100% resolves that Jack is not a criminal, much less a murderer. The LARPers get to be heroes. The tracks of Mafia defeated. And... Yeah, you know, Kingpin, not, I don't think he's dead, I think blinded, but he did lose, like, seemingly all of his men. Like, certainly if there were more, why wouldn't they have taken part in this attack, given how many there were overall in this attack? And certainly, like, if if he didn't send, if, if Kingpin wasn't sending everyone, then why was Kazi there? You know, like, you're telling me that not a single tracksuit mafia can operate a sniper rifle? This was the, the basic, uh, yeah. And I've seen at least one fellow YouTuber suggest that maybe Jack will become Kate's mentor with her mother in jail. Clint seemingly retired for good this time. And now we do know that while he was a little skeezy, he didn't actually do anything wrong. He was just like, he, he rubs you the wrong way, you, get, you feel like there's something off, but he didn't actually do anything wrong. You know, it's, it's the, like, it's essentially, it's the framing the first time we meet him, he's going to become, like, a stepfather to Kate. And Kate clearly doesn't like that. And we have more empathy for her. So the, f the first time we meet him, we see him through her eyes. And that's that's why we didn't like him. But, yeah. Let's see. So, right. It's Yelena, I had a few more things. There's some chance she's going to break off her relationship with Val and just be a young Avenger from now on. And I, if I recall in the comics, she did end up being a young Avenger, but I'm not... I could be wrong about that. Certainly, in the MCU, she has the age for it. And... Let's see. Yeah, so, yeah, she might... If, if she becomes a Dark Avenger or Thunderbolt, whatever they end up calling it, she might be the first member to turn, and certainly one of the most interesting places to have a Black Widow character is where we're not sure who she sides with, and she might turn against the people she's been working alongside. You know, when we first met Natasha, she'd been working for S.H.I.E.L.D. for years, but Yelena? Up until recently, she was still a Black Widow. After the events of the Black Widow solo movie, she quit, she started going around freeing widows, but... and, and then was snapped for five years, but right before the events of the solo movie, she was still a Black Widow. Granted, she was mind-controlled, but she still did do those things. Old habits die hard. And so, yeah. When we saw in the post credit scene, or mid credits I, I forget, of the Black Widow solo movie that Yelena was going to go after Clint, some people said that all that will happen is he'll explain what really happened, she won't kill him. I agree. I think the reason to have her appear here was to have Yelena meet Kate Bishop and for it to be tense at first to set up a more interesting relationship between them than just both of them are heroes on the same team, which is probably what's going to end up happening. Now there's more depth there. <coughs> <coughs> now I mentioned in an earlier video talking about the show that I hoped it wouldn't turn out that the step-parent actually was evil. Countless step-parents in real life are doing their best. We have way too much fiction that claims that they're evil. I don't love that the birth mother turned out to be a criminal, especially considering that her rationalizing or criminal activity is the kind of thing that good parents will tell their children. We have to be responsible. There are consequences to our actions. I don't think they had to do that, especially in a piece of fiction that, let's be honest, in part is made for teenagers who already frequently resent their parents, and where for a chunk of it, she expresses concern for her and seems to genuinely worry about Kate's safety, make important decisions like going against Kingpin based on that concern. I'm not saying I expected her to be 100% bad and evil. I just hope very few children and teenagers watch the show and then question whether their own parents are good people when they express concern and they talk res about responsibility, great power, and consequences. I'm not fundamentally against the idea of parents turning out to be bad in fiction. It's merely the, these issues that I've just mentioned that bother me. Let's see. I, I suppose overall this episode is probably more fun than like really thematically compelling and such compared to like some of the earlier episodes like the Maya centric one was a bit more there was more to 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 sink your teeth into this one 
kind of just empty calories. But yeah, the, the show overall gave me pretty much everything I wanted. And, you know, I, I would still say the first two episodes were a little slow, but later ones were better paced. Also, a quick FYI, there is now a gag reel on Disney Plus for the show. Two minutes long, not the funniest thing ever, but very charming. Just go to Hawkeye on Disney Plus, click extras, it's right there. I believe that was absolutely everything that I had to say about it. So, yeah, I think Moon Knight is next. Already mentioned, really, really stoked for that one. Yeah, I'm hoping this isn't going to be another one of those deals where there's going to be, like, I mean, what was it, like, a month and a half between, let's see, was it What If and then this show starting? I, I hope that they're just going to, like, for, for the other shows, it's been, like, one week with nothing, and then the next one would start up. So, yeah. I guess we'll see. I do understand why. Like, the timing of the show. It was it was kind of important that it ends so close to Christmas. That's for, for sure. But, yeah. That is it. So, I hope you enjoyed watching. As I enjoy watching and recording, and I'll catch you next time.